Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Fang Liqiu from the first Institute of uh, Oceanography, Ministry of Natural Resources, People of the Republic of China, uh, located in Qingdao. My topic will be new ocean, typhoon, and climate models with uh, surface wave. Uh, that means we, we will focus on the coupling process. So this is the uh, outline. The first is a uh, background and the challenge we faced. So what, uh, w w why? First, why we focus on the ocean? As we know, ocean covers uh, more than 70% of the global surface, and uh, more than 97% uh, water resources in, 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 in the global, and more than 90% uh, height from the uh, greenhouse, uh, greenhouse gases. And the, for, the, for the oxygen, it's, more than, it's, it's between 50 to 70 percent. And in fact, the ocean controls the climate. So this is why we uh, f focus on uh, the, the ocean. Uh, as we know, recently, we is considering the UN decades of ocean science for uh, uh, sustainable development for, 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 for the 10 years. And for this uh, decades, we're focused on six Mainly a six part is clean ocean, predicted ocean, health ocean, safe ocean, productive ocean, transparent ocean. So today I will share some ideas with you on the predicted ocean. So for the predicted ocean, the time scale is from days to, to centuries. The first is the days forecast. For, for days forecast, which can be used for ship safety, for the typhoon and the hurricane uh, and storm surge. And also for tourism, you know, we, we enjoy the, you know, the, the ocean uh, along the coastline. And this is for seasonal prediction. I don't know, season, seasonal prediction is for the disaster prevention and the reduction. And uh, also uh, very important is for the flood and the drought, which is, uh, is key important for agriculture. Uh, mostly we, we, we focus on the, the flood and the drought in, in, the, in the land. But in fact, it's controlled by the ocean. Okay? So, and uh, the, 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 the next is for climate change. As we know, the ocean controls the, the, the climate. Not, not the effect, I think it plays a key role in the, in the climate system. And also, uh, this climate change will also affect the fishing. So this is uh, the background. And then we uh, analyze the challenge we faced for ocean uh, general circulation models. This, uh, this challenge lasted for half century. You know, the, the simulated from the model, the sea surface temperature is overheat in summer, and the subsurface is, overheat, is overcooling, while the, the mixed layer depth is too shallow. Here we show, so this is from uh, observed mixed layer depth. As we know, mixed layer depth is so important for fishery, for climate change, and this is for model. So much difference. And for the typhoon, for the typhoon, is, uh, the, this challenge lasts for several decades already. So this is uh, the trick. The, uh, this, this is for last 20 years. Okay? Uh, this is forecast error. So the, the typhoon track is uh, reducing. That, that means we, we have better and better ability to forecast the, the typhoon or hurricane the track. But for the intensity, no any progress during the past several decades. So this is our challenge. And for the challenge for the climate models is a tropical bias. The tropical bias, is for, for example, is here it's too cold, it's too warm. You may say this, uh, maybe this is not a good model. In fact, this is a leading one. This model is from ANCA. We run the model for 300 years and the take last 50 years take average. So this is the, this is the simulation error. So even in this area, the error can be much larger than four degrees. So this is our climate system. Okay. So how to solve these uh, uh, problems or challenge? So as we know, the ocean model is based on governing equation. So we need to go back to the governing equation. And uh, this, this term is a mixing or called a turbulence. So this is uh, with high uncertainty. And uh, we guess this should be related with th this term. And the other is for the, the icy flux. 
As you flux is also kind of a turbulence pro process. And we, previously, we don't know the role of wave breaking as the heat flux and the role of wave in as the momentum flux. For, for example, previously, we think if the wind in this direction and the wind stress always the same direction, we always use this term in the model. But from an observation, it's totally different. Sometimes in low wind conditions, the wind stress can be opposite to the wind direction. So how to consider this process is, is, is a challenge. So the so next, what, what is turbulence? So turbulence is the most important unsolved problem with classical physics. So if we go back to Heisenberg, Heisenberg is a Nobel Prize uh, winner. Uh, he, 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 he said, why meet God? I'm going to ask him two questions. So why reali relativity and why turbulence? So I really believe he will have the answer for the first. Okay, so this is how difficult of uh, this problem we faced. For the, for the mixed layer depth, uh, uh, depth and the sea surface temperature overheating always tell us the mixing the turbulence in the upper is not enough. So where this energy come from? As we know, the, the, this is the, the surface wave. When the wind falls in the ocean, more than 90% energy is into the wind, into the wave. But the wave effect is not considered in the ocean model because it's, uh, it's, uh, previously we think the, the wave is so small scale. The wavelength is only 100 meters, but for the circulation, we have tens of thousands of kilometers, so so much difference, okay? So we always separate, the, so this is where, this is where, this is ocean circulation. For the research community, for the model, is totally different. But we noticed, that we proposed the idea, this kind of uh, breaking, this kind of non-breaking wave can generate turbulence. So how to get this one is a long story. So today, I just show the result. So we express, this is a wave-induced mixing. And uh, we try to understand uh, the physics. That means uh, this kind of mixing is related with the amplitude and the stock drift. Okay, so this is uh, a new proposed idea. And because previously we never show, we never show this kind of non-breaking wave can generate uh, turbulence. So when we propose this idea, a lot of debate. Okay? So could you show us why? Why, you know, the wheel is irrotational. It should not generate turbulence. Could you show me? Could, could, could you show me how can it uh, generate turbulence? So this is uh, the laboratory experiment we published on JPO in 2010. So we, as the bottom, we have a refrigerator and we're monitoring the temperature ev evolution. So this is uh, at, the, at the beginning. At the beginning, the bottom, the temperature is cold and the surface is warm. So it's quite similar to the ocean. And we keep, keep it to nothing. It will take about uh, one day for well mixed. This is molecular mixing, okay? And then we produce the non-breaking wheel. With this wheel, the mixing can be finished within half an hour. So it's clearly demonstrated the wheel can generate a very strong turbulence. Then we need to the in situ observation to support th this idea. So this is uh, one publication from uh, Sutherland on ocean science. So the red one is from our scheme, and the black one is from observation. So you can see these two lines fit quite well. That means the wave induced mixing in the upper ocean plays a dominant role. Unfortunately, probably we did not consider this process in the ocean model. So this is uh, the first part. The second part is a surface wave tide circulation coupled model. So we call this a state of art uh, models. Uh, first, we check how important was the surface wave. At, at, at the beginning, we introduced that. So this is mixed layer depths from observation. This is mixed layer depths from uh, model. So, so much difference. The color bar is the same. By concise wave, we get this one. So this one is very similar to the observation. Okay. So this is, uh, this is from uh, uh, one model. And uh, here, uh, I think uh, a lot of experts know NEMO. So we, 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 do, uh, did the, uh, we based on NEMO 
uh, do some model experiment. This for different kind of resolutions is OCA2. Resolution is two degree by two degree, one degree by one degree, and a quarter by quarter. So this is the, the NEMO model. The subsurface, okay, here is cold. So it's independent of uh, model resolution. So what's the contribution of the surface wheel? So this is the contribution of the surface wheel. By consider the wheel, totally. So this systematic error nearly disappear. So this is, uh, we show how important of the surface wheel in the development of ocean models. The next is why we should consider the tidal processing in the couple model. So first I, I will show you here. So this is, uh, this is China says Qingdao is here, and we show this area. So this, in this area is very special. Uh, because the summertime, the summertime, this from satellite, this is the wind, and the, the, the color is a, is, a, is a sea surface temperature. And from the, the theory of ACOM transport, if the wind is this direction, the ACOM transport to this part, so in this part should be downwelling. The downwelling, <laughs> so the sea surface temperature will, should be higher, but from observation, it's uh, quite low. It's the indicator of upwelling. As we know, Upwelling is very important for fishery. And we do some numerical experiments. If we have a coupled model, we can clearly simulate this upwelling process. But if we close the tide, without the tide, so the upwelling disappears, we only have the downwelling. So this means in the coastal area, the tidal mixing is very important for the generation of upwelling. So, Based on these understandings, we developed the global surface wave tide circulation coupled model. The resolution is 0 0.1 degree by 0 0.1 degrees. So this is the, the for, 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 for the global ocean. And this uh, system already into operational. The third part is surface wave in typhoon model. Okay. Oh, the typhoon model, uh, the typhoon model, this is typhoon, this is the error. So for the weak typhoon, always the, the, the forecast is too strong. For the, for the strong typhoon, it's always uh, too weak. So we consider the, the wheel process, wheel spray and, uh, and uh, wheel, wheel mixing by these two processes. So this is the heat, heat flux. It's without a wheel and with wheel. So the latent heat flux and sensible heat flux are totally different. By consider the surface wheel in the coupled model. So the black line is from data. And this is from couple model. The couple model is very close to the data. And then you may say, oh, this is hand cast. You may tune the model. In fact, it's not. So this is, uh, this is from ECMWF. As we know, Europe Center play a leading role for the typhoon forecast. And this, they, they tried for this, uh, so the same typhoon, they tried for many kind of, uh, you know, numerical experiments. And the difference is quite large. So the, the fourth is surface wave wind climate model. Climate model at the beginning I introduced, so this is the, this is the bias. And the, this is the contribution of the surface wave. By concept of the surface wave, so this can be, this cold is warm, this, this uh, cold is warm. So this is what we expected. And uh, because we changed the sea surface temperature and the precipitation which also were changed, much improved. And the GFDL used our scheme to test their climate models. So this is from observation. It's different kind of uh, schemes, and this is our scheme. Their conclusion is our scheme is much closer to the observation. So this is uh, the, 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 the fourth part. The fifth is a high efficient parallel scheme and the operational ocean forecast system. As we know, so as the computer resources get uh, more and more powerful, the resolution for the ocean and the climate models is higher and higher. But uh, it's, uh, how to use the computer resources, we need uh, the high efficient parallel schemes. So this is, uh, we de uh, developed different kind of schemes. And finally, we, we developed for the global ocean, for surface wheel model is uh, one kilometer by one kilometer. And uh, the, the computer resources is, uh, is use the whole type of light, it's more than 10 million CPU cores. Okay. And uh, we, then we developed the operational uh, forecast system. And uh, this forecast system is shared by you know, the, global, uh, the, the, the global community and, uh, and uh, published by the IOS Westpac. 
So everybody can download from and this from cell phone. And how about the uh, verification? So we compared our operational forecast system with different kind of uh, from UK, from France, from USA, from Canada. And our is the, 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 the error, the forecasting error is the smallest. So this is summary. So we demonstrated that small scale surface will play a key role in improving global ocean circulation models, typhoon models, and climate models. High efficient parallel schemes are crucially important for coupled high resolution models. And we have a lot of uh, you know, applications, including extreme events, uh, such as the Fukushima nuclear le leakage, certain rescue for, for the offshore uh, plankton in, in last year, oil spill, and also for uh, uh, Arctic bloom, is also called the green tide. So that's all. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much for a very nice presentation. Um, actually, for me as well, coming from, from dynamics, but from another domain, it's very nice to see the similarities and uh, challenges in uh, computation. You very well described. Um, you described this across the domains of ocean, typhoon, and climate modeling. Um, motivated by this presentation, I would like to ask you what it is that you consider the state of the art in uh, numerical ocean modeling. Okay. So for the state of art, we have considered as a coupling different kind of processes. Okay, we we coupled we coupled the surface wave, tide, and uh, circulation coupled together. So previously, as I introduced, so this is for different research groups, and uh, for the operational forecast is totally different. Uh, wave is wave, tide is tide, and circulation is circulation. And uh, we propose some ideas to, to couple these three pro process. This couple is uh, uh, it's mainly based on the two processes. One is uh, computer resources. Mm -hmm. As we know, if uh, we couple the so many processes, the, the computation cost will be much higher, and uh, we need uh, uh, you know the more computer resources. No, it's uh, the computer is more and more you know it's uh, powerful, and the other is uh, clear clearly understand the physical process. Uh, as we know, uh, when, when, we, when you talk about uh, coupling, it's uh, maybe sometimes it's not a real coupling. For example, for the wheel, the wheel, the wheel braking can generate turbulence. Mm -hmm. okay? The wheel braking, if we consider this wheel braking process, it also can couple the, the wheel and the circulation. But this process, process doesn't work. It's because the wheel braking can only affect a very shallow area. Mm -hmm. It uh, can only affect uh, in the order of uh, wheel amplitude. Wheel amplitude is uh, like, like uh, one meter, two meters. But what we propose today is uh, the non-breaking process. This process uh, is, uh, can affect much deeper. It's in the order of wheel length. And when wheel length is 100 meters, and 100 meters is very important for mm -hmm. the upholstery. So this is the, the, the difference. Yes. So it is a problem uh, across scales, I guess. <laughs> uh, you have, I would say, uh, based on uh, the, your background, I, I have realized you have really more than 30 years of experience in the mm -hmm. particular domain. Um, and I wonder uh, if you now think back in your work from the early stages until now, uh, how would you describe the history of progress, let's say, in this domain, but also the developments in your works? Uh, how do you see this placed across these 30 years? Okay. So this, uh, this has two, two parts. One is uh, what is the challenge we faced. The second is how to solve this uh, you know, challenge. For the, for the challenge we faced for the ocean models, uh, as I introduced, the, the simulated the sea surface temperature is over, overheating. Mm -hmm. Overheating means, uh, as we know, in summertime, the ocean gets heat from the atmosphere. So it, the, the surface is quite warm if not have strong mixing. And this heat can be accumulated in the, into at the surface. So, so the surface, sea surface temperature is the overheating. Mm -hmm. And the subsurface, because the lack of heat transport in the subsurface is, is too cold. If we have more mixing, and this problem can be, can be resolved. So this is the challenge we faced. 
Although it's, uh, it shows a different part as uh, sea surface temperature, subsurface temperature, and mixed layer. In fact, the key point is one, it's mixing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for the history uh, of the ocean circulation models, as we know, the first ocean circulation model is developed uh, in, in Jeff Dale, United, United States, mm -hmm. in 1967. It's more than half a century ago. So from then on, we have, you know, two, uh, two parts to support the mo ocean model development. One is high resolution, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, more and more computer resources, the high resolution. At, at the beginning, the resolution is five degrees by half, high, five degrees. But now, for the global ocean, normally it's, uh, it's 0 0.1 by 0 mm. 0.1, okay? So it's much... Uh, you know, better than, than, than at, the, uh, at the beginning. So this is one direction. The other is uh, for, the physics, for the physical process. So as we know, in the ocean model, the mixing term is the most important. Mm -hmm. While well, the mixing term, uh, the first one, at the beginning, we use the mixing term oh, as just as a constant. So it's very simple. Take it, take it as, a, as, a, as a constant. And then uh, develop, in, in 1982, developed Mela Yamada, mm -hmm. turbulent closure model. Okay. So this model is uh, introduced uh, a scheme. So everybody used this scheme to... to and, and then in 1994, Bill Large, uh, or also from Inca, United States, they proposed the KPP scheme. And uh, all this... Uh, you can notice, so this progress is very slowly. Mm. Not, 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 not so many publications, it's because so this is a really very hard problem. Mm. So recently, we consider the non-breaking wheel process. Mm. And this process, in fact, we do some numerical experiment. If we, we use, we can choose different kind of uh, turbulent uh, chloral schemes, and all of them, cannot simulate you know, the operation yeah. correctly. Mm -hmm. But if we close, we don't use these turbulent chloride schemes. We only use the surface wheel towards the response of the ocean circulation model. So we, we get very nice results. This, this means so the surface wheel is play a dominant role. Mm -hmm. So yes. unfortunately, Previously in the model, we did not consider this process. So if we consider this process, I think it's uh, our model ability will be mm -hmm. much, much improved. And maybe on this, so um, it is obvious, and this actually relates to my domain, which is fairly different from yours, but uh, where as well the solution of the governing equations for dynamics will play a role for us in structural dynamics, for example. Or in monitoring, uh, we have to make sure we're able to fuse these uh, um, these models with data, so the speed in which we can solve them makes uh, a difference. And I noticed in your recent paper in 2019, you mentioned as well that uh, numerical and parameterization improvements will continue to define the state of the art in numerical ocean modeling mm -hmm. uh, in concert with integration and co-analysis of observations. Mm -hmm. um, in this respect, what is your view regarding the developments in the near future uh, along this line? So, what would be, let's say, the, the future of, um, of uh, numerical ocean uh, computation? So for the development of our ocean models, I, I think the, we have three parts we, we, we could contribute. The first is physical process. Okay. The, for the model, the physics is the, the first important thing. And uh, as, uh, as we we shown by, by, by introducing the coupling process, the simulation result is totally different. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is uh, this one process. The other, the second, is uh, for the high resolution. Uh, as we know, if we have a very coarse resolution, some process like uh, the the, the eddy, mm -hmm. uh, mass square eddy, could could not be recognized by by the model. So we need high resolution models, and uh, of course, this high resolution model need to be supported by the very strong very powerful computer mm -hmm. uh, systems. So this is uh, the, 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 the second. And the third is some uh, new technology, such as data simulation mm -hmm. and artificial intelligence. The data simulation, we can, we can you know, 
merge the you know the observation with the, with the model and uh, get very mm -hmm. good initial conditions yes, we'll and uh, and for the uh, artificial uh, intelligence we can uh, purposely we we use our experience or oh, maybe we try to find the, the difference from the model and the yeah. observation but no with the new technology we can we can identify you know the difference between model and the and the oh, observation yeah. Yeah. yeah very yeah. quickly this is a very good point actually let me build on this uh, you mentioned that modeling can come with errors this is true across uh, fields sure. you even show in your presentation sure. You have discussed biases, uh -huh. um, the erroneous temperature model in the North Atlantic, often leading to propagations of errors uh, in the um, uh, resulting models. Um, my question to you is, what do you deem as trends in model improvement? Uh, you already mentioned artificial intelligence, the potential to use observations uh, and data. How can we decrease uh, or how can we increase our confidence in what the model predictions are? Okay. So the confidence is, uh, is we, we should reduce the uncertainty, right? Yes, exactly. For reduce the uncertainty, first we need some, uh, you know, uh, some uh, tools, such as uh, Monte Carlo, such as uh, Bayesian analysis, to quantify the, you know, uh, the uncertainty. Mm -hmm. uh, more important, it's... Uh, how to, how to reduce the uncertainty. So yesterday, uh, we have a very nice presentation for the, for the climate model. For the climate model, if we run the model, the, the, the model is fixed. Mm -hmm. If we run on different platforms, different computers, mm -hmm. the re result is different. Mm -hmm. And even on the same computer, if very small perturbation on the initial conditions, such as maybe, one or one thousand degrees, mm. like uh, like a temperature, very very small mm. dis uh, disturbance, and uh, the climate system gets a result is totally different, mm -hmm. and uh, even everything is fixed, uh, we we don't have any disturbance mm. at the initial conditions. If we choose different CPU processors, sometimes if uh, we have more, you know. Uh, computer resources, we, we, we would like to have, have more uh, CPU, uh, uh, CPU cores. Mm -hmm. And uh, the difference with uh, more and less CPU resources, yeah. the, the, the difference is quite uh, obvious. Mm -hmm. So one of the, one of the solution is uh, we make an uh, ensemble. Mm -hmm. We ensemble is, uh, means we, we run the, you know, the same model for, for many times. And, uh, and take an average and uh, identify some is out of scope mm -hmm. and uh, could not be considered and uh, take the average as, as the, our yeah. model result. So this is, uh, of course, this is very, uh, you know, high cost. <laughs> yeah. This is a good point. Uh, we should not be presenting maybe these results if they come with uncertainties as deterministic, but rather uh, in their full probabilistic, uh, let's say, form. Um, since you discussed verification, which is basically how, how do we uh, verify a, a model against maybe other available models, I wanted to ask if you could elaborate also on the topic of validation, which would be how can we, uh, how can we actually uh, compare the predictions of our models against observations and mm -hmm. data, and where does, da where does this data usually come from in your case, let's say? Uh, to give you an example, in my case, uh, data comes directly from sensors that mm -hmm. we would attach on systems and where mm -hmm. we monitor the dynamics. Mm -hmm. In your case, we're talking about a completely different scale, right. obviously. Right. Right. So where do the observations come from? Okay. So the, the data for, for, for the ocean, can, one is from satellite. Mm -hmm. The satellite can, you know, can have the global observation of the... The, the, mainly uh, sea surface, mm -hmm. uh, sea surface temperature, the wind, yes. and the, it's a process. And uh, the other is from, for, from the mooring system. We have some buoys mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in the ocean. This is a high cost. Mm -hmm. And uh, some data is from, you know, from the, the ship cross. Mm -hmm. And from ship cross, we can also get some data to, to uh, validate mm -hmm. our model. So the validate, uh, as we know, validate model is, is very important because, uh, first I make, make a joke, it's, uh, as a, uh, I'm a modeler, mm -hmm. so I they, they decide, so the so modeler always try to, you know, to be honest. But uh, we, 
you know, our forecast is, is, is always, no, if not always, mm. but often, you know, it's not correct. Okay. Or uncertain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so model is model. It's reality is reality. It's totally different. So we need, you know, to compare the data from uh, different uh, sensors with, uh, with the model results and uh, try to, you know, identify the mm. bias. With this bias, then we try to improve our physical understanding, how to improve the model. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, the purpose of uh, validation mm -hmm. in the uh, ocean model. Exactly. In fact, in, for, 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 for ocean model, it's not only the validation, but uh, another process for data simulation is also very important. Data simulation is combine the observed data with the model as a, as a you know, a, a, a control, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, so with some technique and uh, the, the initial condition is much closer to the, mm -hmm. to the real. Mm -hmm. And then we, based on this, and then we do forecast for mm -hmm. the future. Yes, in fact, we do something similar. Uh, we call it model updating. And this is the way in which yeah, yeah, we yeah. can fuse. Quite, quite, quite uh, similar, yeah. And I agree, this, this gives us uh, models that are closer to, to reality, which is important for uh, really modeling systems that are mm -hmm. true to life. Mm -hmm. um, now... Maybe we can get, uh, we, we can touch upon uh, one of the topics that have to do with the applications of these models. Uh -huh. um, and what you, what I have seen in your work is that you have been using these also to tackle extreme events. Mm -hmm. So you have work that has dealt with nuclear radiation spread uh, following uh, the Fukushima nuclear power um, yeah. uh, um, catastrophe in 2011 and also the rescue of lives at sea after capsizing of boats in Phuket and mm -hmm. so forth. Maybe you can elaborate a bit on these applications that have to do with extreme events um, okay. and recovery essentially. Okay, so very good. So could I can use the use, uh, a projector? So because uh, the, the time is not enough, so here I have several sliders. So this, uh, as we know, in, in, in March of uh, 2000, uh, uh, 2011, the Fukushima have a nuclear leakage. And uh, after that, uh, you know, the, the, the government response is very quickly. Mm -hmm. For example, in China, we, it's, it's, uh, it's happened in uh, 11th, mm -hmm. and the, uh, uh, on, on, on 13th, on 13th, I'm on the way from Beijing back to Qingdao. And on the, uh, in the airport, I noticed, oh, this is forecast for three days. Okay, the three days forecast affect this mm -hmm. area. So the next question is, as we know, the, the, in this area, the wind is from west to east. It's for three days. So how about one month? Okay, how about one year? Mm -hmm. So after I go back, I, I uh, uh, push our group to do this, uh, you know, forecast this uh, three days, five days, 10 days, and uh, this is uh, for the, you know, uh, one month. After one month, the whole, you know, the North Hemisphere is uh, affected by mm -hmm. this uh, accident. Uh, of course, the, 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 you know, the uh, uh, concentration is very, very low. Okay. And we compare, this, this is some data. Uh, after, after six months, uh, 16 months, so this, is, this data is from Japan, they, they, from surface to 800 meters along 165 degrees. This is from south to north, and this is the observation. And this is our model result. So if you compare, this is quite similar. You know. That means our model, this is based on a couple model. So this model is uh, have very good performance mm. for, the, for the forecast of this area. And this is for the, for the ocean. In the, in the atmosphere, you know, the process is very, very quickly, within one month, it affects the whole mm. north hemisphere. But this is in the ocean. In the ocean, it's, uh, it's uh, this one year, as uh, two years, and, uh, and this part is 2015. And, uh, and uh, this, this yellow one is for uh, 2020, okay? It's, it's very close to this one. And for here, even we can have the, you know, 2037, so many, many years later, okay? So this is uh, propagated to this part and then come back. So very, very slowly, this, this, this process. So this is, uh, this uh, uh, animation in the, mm -hmm. in, you know, for the for the surface concentration, and for the for the uh, search and rescue, uh, as we know, last year the, 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 this is a Phuket Island, okay, Phuket Island. This uh, when two ships 
uh, capsized in this area. And uh, we have cooperation with, uh, with Thailand. And after the accident, the Thailand government sent a message to us to ask, so how to, could you identify the search and rescue area? Because this, this is the location. So we, we should search here, search here, or search here. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we may forecast the one day forecast, the two day forecast, three forecast. And the, finally, the result is confirmed by the real observation, all the people. All the missing people is in this uh, area. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, one example. So I find two very important points here. The fact that your appli the application of these methods uh, really assists practically governments in, sure. uh, in recovery. And that you one has to operate with different means uh, to do short-term forecasting, something very fast, and then long-term right. uh, on how this evolves in a, right. in, a, in a greater scale. Right, right. On the other hand, there exist also events that uh, are not uh, necessarily, uh, are not extreme events, but uh, they are harmful, for example, for the balance of our ecosystems. Um, you have relevant work on the algae bloom, for example, which is the, I found is the rapid increase or accumulation in the population of algae in uh, water systems. Um, how can ocean models be applied in, uh, in uh, such a, a situation? Okay. It's for the uh, management, like okay. So we can we can we can still use. The, could you transfer to the so so this one, or oh, this one? We can escape. So this this is uh, this this is Qingdao. Qingdao is uh, our city is located in this area, and uh, and in you know in in 2008, we we will have Olympic rector <coughs> in, in Qingdao area, mm -hmm. and this is just before the Olympic game. Mm -hmm. So this this is called. Uh, RT blue, okay. it's very, you know, very serious. So, so what we, we need to know where this RT blue come from. So this, oh, for, for, for example, this is for 2008, okay. 2008, it's Qingdao is here. So all this area will accumulate. This, this is uh, under, the, under the effect of the surface wind and the sea surface current to so come accumulate to the Qingdao. And two years later, this is 2010. 2010, even when in this area is very close to Qingdao, it's only 30 kilometers. So the, like, the local government is very, you know, very nervous. Mm -hmm. They want to know, oh, where this year the Arctic bloom will also seriously affect the Qingdao or not? Mm -hmm. So the government asked me to, you know, provide some uh, uh, prediction. And for that year, the prediction is. Uh, Yes, companies in this area, and then turn direction. So we are no much effect on the Qingdao city. Mm -hmm. So this is our conclusion. Yeah. So they said, oh, are you serious? This is because we need many people, many boats to you know, deal with this emergency. So are you sure? Because it is very short term uh, prediction, only several days. So I, I told them, so not so accurate, but the pattern is correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. We, we are sure the, the majority of the Arctic bloom will not affect the Qingdao. So at the last, we, we confirmed this result. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's very, very interesting. Actually, I promised Tatiana I would uh, open the questions for the audience, and we, on, we have less than five minutes left. So maybe if there are questions uh, or one question from the audience that we could take. Yes, maybe we can uh, use a microphone if uh, possible. Or maybe, yeah, great, if you have one. Um, yeah, you, you sort of uh, mentioned data simulation in passing, but obviously in order to do a good forecast, you need to have a very good initial condition, and it's absolutely crucial. And I was wondering uh, what technique you use for the ocean data simulation and how you um, uh, make sure that basically the observations arrive timely in the ocean, because the observations on the ocean are not... Um, you know, not like in the atmosphere, basically. They are very sparse, they arrive maybe not very timely, um, can you say something about that? Yeah, for the for the for the ocean forecast, the initial condition is very important. So we need need to do some, some data simulation. What we use is a common filter, ensemble common filter. So as we know, this ensemble means uh, we need uh, some members. Uh, at present, we we select ten. Ten. Uh, if we select twenty members, that means the the cost will be twenty times higher. So at present, we use 10 members, use uh, uh, ensemble filter. 
as a you know, data simulation scheme. I think we're now out of time, so I give you the floor again. Yeah, since we have uh, another session to follow right after this, mm -hmm. uh, if you have more questions, you can try to communicate with uh, uh, Fanli or Alani afterwards. So let's thank our interviewee and interviewer again. Thank you so much.